on refrigeration. Now let's cover field servicing, such as oil pump bearing head, valve plates and gaskets, valve plate removal and replacement, electrical terminal arrangements, and terminal plate removal and replacement. We'll teach you proper procedures and make you aware of the differences in components so that the correct part gets installed. Remember, always disconnect power, isolate the compressor from the rest of the system by shutting off the suction and discharge service valves, and then recover all refrigerant in the compressor using appropriate and safe procedures. Danger. Never operate the compressor with the terminal box cover removed. Oil pump bearing head. Flooded starts can cause the refrigerant to flush oil out of the lubrication system. Without proper lubrication, all bearing surfaces will wear. If the pump end main bearing wears, the additional clearance can cause a drop in oil pressure so that the compressor will not get proper lubrication. A new oil pump would then be required. To change out a pump end main bearing or an oil pump, you must remove and replace the pump end bearing head assembly. On 06Es, this is also your access to the oil pressure regulator. First, loosen and remove the four cap screws holding the cover in place. Removing the cover exposes the spring and guide vane. Care should be taken not to lose the compressed spring. Now, loosen and remove the Allen head set screws which hold the oil pump drive segment to the crankshaft. Notice these screws are two different sizes, a number 10 and a quarter inch. The oil pump drive segment must be removed before the bearing head can be taken off the compressor. Note, the oil pump drive segment has a small tube attached in the center. Remove the eight bolts which hold the bearing head to the crankcase. Tap lightly on the bearing head to break the gasket seal. Remove the bearing head. Remove the old gasket and inspect the machined surfaces. If cleaning is required, care should be taken to avoid marring the surfaces. If the replacement gasket is fiber, oil it on both sides. Note, do not oil the new metal replacement gasket because the new beveled metal gasket does not require oil. Reinstall the new gasket and bearing head on the compressor, positioning the bearing head as shown. If Wolverine gaskets are used, oiling is not required or recommended. Next, replace the bearing head bolts and torque to 30 to 35 foot-pounds on 06D compressors and 55 to 60 foot-pounds on 06Es. Install the oil pump drive segment using the new parts that are included in the replacement oil pump bearing head assembly. Align the segment so it fits into the open slot at the end of the pump. Be sure the tube is pointing away from the crankshaft. Torque the smaller number 10 Allen head set screw to 4 to 6 foot-pounds and the larger quarter inch set screw to 12 to 15 foot-pounds. Replace the guide vane and spring. The guide vane is put in before the spring. The last step in replacing the oil pump bearing head is to rub a thin coat of oil on both sides of the cover plate gasket. Install the cover and gasket and torque the cover bolts to 16 to 20 foot-pounds. Do not over torque these cover bolts. The bearing head is aluminum and excessive torque will strip the threads. Valve plates and gaskets. Over the years, Valve plates and gaskets have undergone several changes. There are a number of different valve plate and gasket arrangements used on 06D compressors depending upon the bore size. To ensure that the component you chose is the correct replacement, you should be familiar with all the variations. Valve plates have a number of different openings and ports. Suction gas enters the cylinder head through the suction gas inlets Two are shown here, at the left and the right. In some cases, there may be only one inlet. The gas then enters the cylinder during the piston's downstroke through the suction ports. There are three suction ports per cylinder on this valve plate. 
as the piston goes through its upstroke, it compresses the gas to a point where it can exit the discharge ports and enter the discharge portion of the head. On side cylinder banks, the discharge gas will exit the discharge gas outlet and pass through crankcase passages to a discharge service valve on a four-cylinder compressor or to the center head on a six-cylinder unit. Center head valve plates have another port called a crossover port. The crossover port allows gas from one side cylinder bank to enter the center cylinder head. In this end view, the suction gas enters the cylinder at one, is compressed, then discharged at two through a discharge gas port. At three, the gas exit the discharge gas outlet in the side bank, then goes through the internal passages in the crankcase and enters the center cylinder head through the crossover port at four. The gas mixes with the discharge gas from the other side bank and the center cylinder bank to exit through the discharge service valve attached to the center cylinder head at five. On units with unloaders, the crossover port in the unloader cylinder head is called a recirculation port because it's used to recirculate discharge gas back to the suction side while operating unloaded, cylinder bypass only. You should be aware that cylinder bypass and suction cutoff unloaders are not the same and use different parts. For example, the cylinder bypass unloader uses a check valve on the valve plate and a bypass piston on the control valve. The suction cutoff unloader does not have a check valve on the valve plate, and there's no piston on the control valve, but it does use an unloader valve body in the cylinder head. For more detail and troubleshooting information, refer to the back of your workbook. Although both the cylinder bypass, as shown on the left, and the suction cutoff, shown on the right, use the same type of control valve, the cylinder heads and cylinder head gaskets are physically different, and the parts cannot be interchanged. Notice that only the suction cutoff head has a cap on the lower side. This is one way of telling the two types apart. Let's look at the valve plates on O6D air conditioning duty compressors. All air conditioning valve plates have three discharge ports per cylinder. In the lower left, a valve plate designed for use with cylinder bypass unloading heads is used on side banks. Although not shown here, these valve plates come assembled with a check valve, which is fitted in the larger diameter opening at the upper center portion of the valve plate. Valve plates with only one suction inlet are used on some four-cylinder models. Refrigerant duty O6DR compressors use a canted valve plate. It's used on the high efficiency models and where additional capacity is desirable. Notice the indentation machined into the plate under the discharge valves and valve stops. This results in the discharge valves sitting closer to the cylinder bore, thus reducing the clearance volume between the top of the piston at top dead center and the valves themselves. By doing so, the rated compressor capacity increases. On the older six-cylinder O6D compressors, a dowel pin is located on the center cylinder deck, as shown here, to ensure proper installation of the valve plate. Remove the fifth dowel pin when replacing with the current universal valve plate. Proper positioning of the valve plate provides proper gas passage from the side banks of the compressor. Discharge gas from both side cylinder banks enters the discharge chamber of the cylinder head, then exits through the discharge service valve. This slide illustrates why the center valve plate must be used on a center cylinder bank. Be sure to consult your parts list for proper valve plate and gasket usage. Valve plate gaskets and suction valves used on the O6D compressor are related to bore size as well as standard and high efficiency characteristics. Bore size for these compressors is either 2 inch or 1 and 13 sixteenths, depending on the age of the compressor. Shown here are sample valve plate gaskets and suction valves for both standard and high efficiency model compressors. 
Notice the difference between the standard efficiency valve on the left and the newer high efficiency valve on the right. O60 cylinder head gaskets are set up for standard side heads, left, center head, top, suction cutoff, right, and cylinder bypass on loader side heads, bottom. The gaskets vary in thickness and material. Current gasket material is either neoprene asbestos fiber or neoprene coated steel. Whenever replacing them, be sure to obtain the correct part number gasket for the particular compressor being worked on. Having the compressor model and serial number available when ordering parts will aid in obtaining the correct thickness and material. Always check that the replacement gasket is correct by placing it on the cylinder head to see if it matches the machined surfaces. Now let us look at the valve plates used on the larger O6E series compressors. Like the smaller O6D, these compressors use a variety of different valve plates depending on application and unloader arrangements. For compressors built prior to 1985, you will also find variations in valve plate thickness and port shape depending on the age of the compressor. These are old and new O6ER low temperature refrigeration duty valve plates. The upper plate is the newer high efficiency version and can be identified by two oval discharge ports and the wide hump at the upper left side of the plate. The older standard efficiency valve plate has two round discharge ports per cylinder. These plates are easily identified by the two humps on the left side of the plate. These plates are also thinner than older air conditioning duty plates. Newer O6E compressors use a high efficiency valve plate that will, in many cases, be used in conjunction with the suction cutoff on loader arrangement. The newer high efficiency valve plate, shown here, can be easily identified by the elongated or oval shaped discharge ports, valve, and valve stops. This valve plate also has a tapped hole in the center of the plate to accommodate the newer style cylinder head gasket which we'll cover later. As mentioned earlier, valve plates in compressors equipped with suction cutoff on loading will not have a check valve. Two variations of valve plate gaskets are used on the O6E compressors. Earlier air conditioning duty compressors use a neoprene asbestos fiber gasket and two suction valves per cylinder. Newer compressors use a slightly different arrangement which we'll see in a moment. Shown below is a refrigeration duty valve plate gasket made of neoprene coated steel. The refrigeration duty version has three tabs, one at each end and one at the top. The air conditioning duty gasket is identified by the four tabs, two at each end, on the gasket's perimeter. It's important to use the proper gasket with the proper valves because of variations in valve and gasket thickness. Otherwise, valve travel may be restricted or overstressing of the valve may occur. All valve plate and valve plate gasket packages for the O6E compressors include the proper suction valves and gaskets. Newer valve configurations use a partial suction valve backer as shown above instead of a second complete valve as previous models.